Hello and welcome to Stephanie B. Creativity. Today, we are going to make this adorable little critter. Now, this is a basic beginner-friendly knitting lesson. It's done on a circular knitting machine and it only needs two tubes to be made. You're going to use some safety eyes, or I'm going to use some safety eyes. You can embroider a face. It's all up to you. This little guy is so sweet. It's only made with, like I said, two pieces. Stick around and see how this fun little project comes together. I did these on my 48 pin Centro circular knitting machine. They're made with only two pieces. You have the tube that is the body that is flattened down and used like a square or rectangle. And you have the tube that is the head that has a drawstring put across in the middle so that you can tuck it inside, stuff the head, stitch it on, and then you have room on the outer layer to create these cute little ears. All you need is some worsted or number four yarn. If you want to do plastic eyes, you need some safety eyes and a safety nose. If you want to do embroidered eyes, you need some black yarn for the eyes, maybe some pink for the nose, and a little bit of black for the mouth. I didn't even put a mouth on this cute little stripey guy. I'm going to use these two colors of yarn. I've got this sort of maize yellow, which is kind of a yellow ochre type of color. This is the Pound of Love by Lion Brand. And I've got uh, for contrast or a little bit of, you know, a little bit of something, something. <laughs> I've got this beautiful natural heather color in the Lion Brand wool ease. It's another worsted weight yarn and it's washable. So the whole thing can be thrown in the washing machine if it gets grubby or whatever, but I'm going to show you how to put this together really quick. I am going to use the maize color first. We're going to cast on the whole ring. I'm going to do the whole body up until the what's going to end up being the front here so one end is going to be the buff color and it's or natural color and it's going to be what I have here for the chest and the front legs the back legs are all going to be this color to start off with we just need to get cast on and we're going to do 35 rows or rounds with this color. You can do this on any type of knitting machine or hand loom that gives you enough, enough stitches. You can do this on the smaller knitting machine. You just make a smaller cat. Just start running this around. So we're going to get this yarn color changed. I'm doing just a basic color change, which is snip the yarn off, leaving enough hanging down in. Little cat toy here. Grab your new color that you're going to use. I like to put my color under two needles and into the holder here. Make sure that it draws down both the new color and the old color on that last or first needle. I'm going to go ahead and tie this. When it's right here, if you tie it, it's not going to ever be too tight because it's still drawn down inside with the two needles. So I'm going to just give it a quick overhand, double granny, square knot, whatever you want to call it, just like that. And now I'm going to go to 50 on my counter. I'm going to do 15 rows of this color. Now this is arbitrary. This is to your whim. You don't have to do any color changes. You can do multiple color changes. It's all up to you. Here we go. 
So now what I'm going to do is just do a long tail pickup on here. I need to grab my needle. If you're interested in how this little house is made, I have a video. It's linked right up there. It's a cute little cozy cottage. And now what I'm going to do is just take my bent tip darning needle and run this around once. So right here, just as this needle starts to come up, all of the rest of these stitches are ready to be picked up. All right, there we go. We've got this pulled off. I'm going to just sort of flatten that down just a little bit. Give it a nice stretch. And there we go. The head's going to be a little bit more detailed than the body. The head is going to have 25 stitches total for the for the outside of the head. I'm going to do 15 rows of the yellow color, then I'm going to do 10 rows of the natural color and put a drawstring in. And then I will do another 10 rows of the natural color and then I will do 10 rows of the yellow. It just makes it look tidier. First color change. We're going to do 10 rounds, then I'm going to put a drawstring in. We're going to leave this in, we're going to put a drawstring in, and it doesn't matter what color it is. So I'm going to use this as my drawstring. You need to make sure that your drawstring is bigger than go, you know, what it is to go around because you need to have the ends that you can grab. So what I'll do is I'm going to drop some yarn down inside. I'm going to knit with two strands at the same time for one round. And I'm starting on one and I will stop at 48. Okay, and 48. Then I'm going to drop that drawstring back down. I'm gonna be poking these drawstrings through to the outside, but not right now. I'm going to do another nine rows with the natural color. Now I'm going to snip that off and I'm going to do another 10. I'm gonna to go to 45 rounds. Start this yarn underneath the last and first needle, right? Right there. And I'm gonna, and right now, while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna poke the drawstrings through to the other side. That way I don't have to remember to get it done. There we go. Going to 45 now. We're going to do the same long thread pickup. I wanted to show you that if you use a different yarn, you can get a different look. You can also use your tubes inside out and have that bumpy type of look here. So I did that on this one. For the body, I did the uh, pearl side out. And for the head, I did the stocking stitch side out. You can do this, like I said, with the little machine, with the little hand looms, with the big looms. You can do this on circular needles. Exact Putting them together is exactly the same. If you're doing this on needles, I'd say probably a number 10 with the worsted weight yarn. Eight, well, eight or nine or 10, whatever you've got. And knit your tube the same way, same number of rows, same number of stitches. This is 48 stitches around for both of the tubes. I also wanted to show you different yarn. This is the Red Heart Brushed. Gives this really soft kind of kitty cat soft halo. This is the Baby Burnett Velvet White. So it's soft and really cuddly. This is the uh, Big Twist. I'm not positive, but I think it's the Charcoal Big Twist Heather 
type of type of yarn. And this is my little lamb. This was just with different red heart yarns. Look at this. With this basic animal base, you can, or body base, with this basic body base, because, you know, if you did it this way, body, legs, arms, you could put the head up here between the shoulders and you could have a, like a person also. Don't put a tail on them. <laughs> and you'd be able to have a person. I'm going to use these blue eyes for the kitten and a sweet little pink nose. I've got the washers here to put it on. And we'll be doing that in just a minute. But I wanted to have these sitting here and ready to go. You can make these. You can make anybody. You can make anything. You are the creator of your own animal world here. Look at that. I am going to take the body. I'm flattening it out. Make sure that my, where my color change and my, my yarn is coming out is on the edge. You can do this any way you want. You don't have to do it this way. But what I wanna do is just seal the tube side to side. You could do this with waste yarn. Then you would be able to easily pick up your stitches. I am just going to go and stitch across between the, the bumps, just like this. And I'm just gonna work my way across. It's not imperative that you get every single one because we're not taking out the, the, the cast on line. We're not taking out that cord, so you will never drop a stitch. If you miss one, don't worry about it. This is closing a tube with, um, <laughs> with training wheels on, and you don't have to worry. This is a really super friendly beginner project. You don't have to know how to crochet. You don't have to even own a crochet hook. You can do this going back and forth, just across, or you could whip stitch. I kind of like doing it through the little bumps that are going through my cast on line or cast off line, just because it lines up these stitches really nice. But again, you can do this any way you want. I'll meet you back here when I have finished closing both ends of the body tube on the part that's going to be used for the head. This side is longer than this side. So this is the inside of the head. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw this down just like making a hat. So you're gonna draw string that in just like making a hat. Pull it in nice and tight and we will stitch around this to close it. This is going inside, so it doesn't have to look really pretty. Nobody's ever going to see it, but you do want it to be secure. Stitch around this opening, taking my needle with the yarn that came off of this loop or this ring, and I'm just going to run it around under those stitches. And I'm going to go ahead and draw this in most of the way. Not exactly like doing a hat though, because I want the top to be flat so I can shape it to make the ears. That's, so we're going to draw it down. And just like we did with the, with the body, I'm going to stitch going back and forth through those through those loops. I don't mind if this is pulled in just a little bit on the corners, but I don't want it drawn all the way shut because what I want to be able to do is make those ears that are on top. So I'm just going to close the top of this flat like I did before and I'll meet you right back here. Okay, I'm not cutting off this, this string right here because I will use it for when I do the shaping. I am going to go ahead and tuck that up inside so the, the head ball is getting stuffed inside. 
I am going to draw string this down just a little bit. with my hand inside like this. What that's doing is that it's helping me to see where I need to put the eyes and the nose. I am going to flatten down the, the yarn on the inside right here. I'm flattening those together so that I can put my little eyes on figure out where they're going to go. Do I want it really? Now nah, I don't want it that wide. Like that. And then our little nose. Like that. I think that's good. I think that's I think that's pretty well centered. <laughs> Isn't that just adorable? Oh, that is so cute. Now, what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and put the big keeper on the nose because that one snaps on right like that. Remember that these types of, uh, these safety eyes and noses and, and bits, these safety pieces, they are more a convenience. They are not really for small children that might chew on them and, and pull them off. Remember that you're working with a knitted fabric that has, has holes. So you could take a piece of another piece of fabric or felt and put it on the inside with a tiny little hole that this would pop through. But if you want to to be truly safe for small children, I would definitely go with embroidering the face on. Embroidered the eyes, the nose, the mouth. You have lots of opportunities and options. You know your children best. Go ahead and put polyfill inside this. And this is just crafters, poly cho uh, crafters choice polyfill. I'm fluffing it apart. I'm going to take a small wad of it, put it inside. Then I'm going to dig through that, spread it out, and put another wad inside of that. Now I'll close this down and we'll see if we've got it tight enough. I need more polyfill in there. But see how that's gonna look? But yeah, I need a, I need a bit more stuffing in here. So I'm going to open that back out and put this down on the inside of that wad in the middle. The reason why I do that is that it keeps the outside of the ball smooth or smoother. I am going to go ahead and pull this drawstring. Look at that. I, I pulled it, but I did not pull it all the way through. The drawstring is going to stay in, but you're not going to see it. So don't worry. We'll be tightening up that face a little bit more, but we will also tie this down nice and snug, about like that. It doesn't have to be closed completely because that is going to be against the body. And I am going to run my, my needle around to make it uh, slightly more secure. I'm not going to finish the ears until, we got, until we've got it attached to the body because I don't know how I want my ears to end up. I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half. So this would be um, hot dog style. And we are going to give it a couple stitches. This is just going to be a bit of a whip stitch, whipping over two or three times and getting a bit of a knot. All right. So five stitches on either side of that little knot where I joined it, I'm going to mattress stitch. So that's just picking up that bar in between on the other side. So that one, then come back to the front, then go to the back. See, I'm just picking up that bar in between 
it doesn't really matter. You could just whip stitch this. This is just the way I like to do it. You can do it any way that makes you happy. That's all joined up together. Nice and tidy. Now I'm going to actually whip stitch right here at the end and put a put a little knot. Do the back legs first. So what I'm since I have the this yarn down here, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go to the center. And now I'm not being exactly super precise. I'm just going to the center ish. And I'm going to bring that center down right here to the center seam down the middle of the of the body. And I'm going to whip stitch that end or that pinch it and stitch that spot in just like that. And then we are going to stitch these closed. All right. However you want to stitch them, make it up, do whatever makes you happy. We are going to do this end. We will stuff some polyfill in for the back half of the body. We will bring this down, but we will not stitch this bit closed until we have the arms most of the way. We're going to leave a little gap, all right, so that we can get stuffing in here for the arms. But first off, I'm going to get the back end. All right, now we're going to go ahead and get some stuffing into the body. I'm going to put a little ball of stuffing down in the toe, kind of round out that little toe a little bit. You see how you don't see any stuffing? That's because we've got those that double layer tube right here. Take a little ball of stuffing and put it down in the toe. And these little guys get all kinds of personality. So don't don't be surprised if it starts turning out to be something that you didn't intend it to be. You know, I was intending this to be a cat, but maybe it's something else. I'm going to kind of smushy, smush some of this stuffing around. Kind of get the big ball of it in here for the, for the main part of the body. You want it to be soft and squishy. See, because what's going to happen is this is going to come back like this to be the arms. Isn't he cute? You can put a tail or not. Um, truthfully, he looks like a little corgi. So I'm going to stitch all of this part, all of the, the butterscotch, yellowy orange color. I'm going to stitch that. So I'm just going to get this little guy stitched up on his tummy up to that edge. And then we'll be able to bring this down and make his little arms like that. There we go. So now I'm going to take the natural yarn that's right here, the natural color. And we are going to stitch down that arm almost to the center here. I want to be able to reach in and shove some stuffing up inside the little hand, up inside the little paws. So there, that's what we're going to do.
a little bit of shaping on the body is kind of fun to do. And I think I'm going to take this that I already have going through here from the, from the legs. I'm going to run it down that, that middle stitching area, down the belly, pinch it, turn around and go back, come out that area. Going to give them a little, little bit of shaping, pulling it in like this. And the reason for doing that is so when I put the head on, it looks like the little guy is standing up instead of just splayed out. You know, you can do it both ways. You could leave it flat and have it so that it looks like it's, you know, just ah, completely splayed out. Or you can do it so it looks like it's standing up a little bit more like that. So the difference, splayed out or standing up, totally up to you. And I'm just going to run that yarn back through all the way to the inside and out. Oh, this is so, 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 so cute. I'm going to come out a few stitches right there. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use this fabric right here and I'm going to sew it down on the body. And this is the only tricky, tricky bit. And this is where you really start getting personality in your critter. Because the way the head ends up being really, really says what their little attitude is. So I'm just going to go through, I'm going underneath of a couple stitches and then I'm going through a couple stitches and and you just do that all the way around now yes this little guy's head is way bigger and I like it that way it's very much now I am just squishing this head as I'm doing this so that I can see where I'm stitching And I'm stitching through, you know, I'm going under a couple stitches. Uh, this, there's no magic on this one. This is purely get it done. Um, however you can get it done. One of the things you do want is that you don't want the head to be too, too wobbly. So I will be pinching some more stitches around here at the base of the head because I don't want it to be too wobbly. When your yarn gets smaller, it is easier to end up pulling it out of the needle more often. And something else that you can do is you can reach in and grab a hold of the inner lining of the head because that gives you a, a more sturdy, a more sturdy point to, to attach to. And you can feel it in there. You have to go a little bit deep to get to the to get to that lining because you're going to go in around and come back out. See like where this, where this fabric is really loose here. I don't want to just attach to that. I want to attach all the way in and grab a hold of the stuffed ball that's inside. So that really gives you a much more firm attachment point. I'm going to tie this one off right here and I'm going to get another piece of the yarn to stitch with because this one's getting really, really short and it keeps popping out of the, out of the needle. I want this to be tipped up just a little bit more. So that means I am going to be stitching higher up on the back of the neck to pull the head back. These are all things that you can decide, you can figure out, you can do it. That's part of sculpting your little, your little animal. See how I've got this loose fabric here to be able to shape the ears. This could even be like a little Simba 
So many things this could be. I'm going to come up through the belly. See, I've got extra thread there. I'm going to leave it a little long right here. Up through the head. Since we have this yarn coming out of the tip of his ear, I'm going to run it down along the edge to where I want the base of the ear to be. Like that. Then we're going to do a running stitch kind of under all of those columns. It's real interesting how you can figure out ways to hide your stitches, especially when you're using yarn that's the same color. Oh my gosh, isn't that the cutest little ear? Not all cats have sharp pointed ears. Maybe it's a little lion cub. Maybe it's a puppy. I don't know. <laughs> Has not told me its name. See, I'm just doing some running stitches back and forth. I'm going to come around the outside. Same color yarn as we've been using, so it's not going to be noticeable. I want to bring it around the outside so that it can shape the bottom of that ear. Look at that. Just shape that bottom of the ear. All right. I'm going to kind of stitch that off a little bit, give it a couple whip stitches over, over and around, and then I am going to take this and go straight across and out the other side, right here, out this other side, below the ear, so I can figure out what I'm doing. Remember, this is separate from where all the stuffing is. So you can shape this into all kinds of shaped ears. But I'm going to see if I can get it to be about the same shape as that ear. I love how this leaves so much open for interpretation and for imagination. This little guy could be a lion cub one day. Could be a little bear cub another day, could be a kitten, could be a cat, could be a puppy, could be anything. Wow. That's, that's what I love about making these kinds of animals. And it's really very fast. Um, you know, I did this in less than two hours. I made this whole thing more like, more like about an hour and a half. So if you needed a toy to give to someone as a um, birthday gift or a baby shower or, you know, anything, you don't have to have the plastic safety eyes. But if you want them, I do have a link down below in the more information box for the safety eyes. I know people were asking about them after Mr. Froggy. So if you uh, haven't already seen, I've got Mr. Frog. He's up here also, the link. And all of my toys are linked up there in a full playlist of toys. So there we go. Isn't this absolutely adorable? I hope that you enjoyed this lesson, that you will make these, share them with your friends, share the video with your friends. We'll see you soon. Remember, go out, do something creative, take care of yourself, and be kind. Bye.